no cover. Said that little Louis Vega is a Miles Davis of house music. Why? Because he's always reinventing himself, always redefining his sound. So here's part one of our interview with little Louis Vega. Check it out. Yo, thanks, David. We're here with little Louis Vega. How's it going? Good, good, good. I'm very happy. Yeah, you know what? The last time I saw you was on your birthday last year at the Standard. Wow, at the Standard. Oh, you mean uh, in the in the diner? I mean the uh, restaurant in there? You mean? Yeah, but downtown pack. I'm gonna make sure you remember. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> We hear Brittany Andrews like getting oh, a little pillow talk. Yeah, no, downtown at Jason Bentley's party. Yeah, I thought you meant uh, the other one. Tell me a little bit about this whole elements of life that's going on. This whole album, it's a whole approach. She's got like a bossa nova, got a lot of drums. You know, you've been in this business for such a long time. It's a little bit of everything. Yeah. Well, uh, basically, this is my first solo album ever in my whole career, and. Um, it's a really uh, uh, deep album because uh, I made it for my wife and my son. You know, it's a uh, it's a it's a bit of a few different things. It's you know, it's about celebrating life, family, spiritualism, uh, culture. Mm -hmm. You know, unifying cultures. Uh, the song, the album's in six different languages. I mean, it was a really uh, the hardest thing I've ever done. I'm very excited about it. Uh, I have a band that I formed now from the guys I've been working with in the studio for many, many years. And um, that's my new thing, man. I want to go out, I want to make albums, and I want to do them live, and I, I want to conduct my band. Like, like, you know, like you did it with your father did, right? You had his own band. And yeah, my father had his own band. My uncle, you know, who was um, the late Hector Lavoe. Uh, I've watched them all my life, you know, have their bands. and. Watch Willie Colon and Hector Lavoe as a child from writing songs in the living room of my house on my little, on my piano. You know, way back in the late 60s, early 70s to, you know, watching them perform in Madison Square Garden and do what they do, you know. But I was just in awe of the way you can control a band and, and just collaborate with them, you know. And since I'm a producer, I mean, I, you get the best of both worlds with me and so do I get from them as well because they're great session players and great live players. Well, you have a voracious background. I mean, why do you feel it took you so long to get to this point? Well, you know, for me, it was just making great music, and I love bringing happiness and people's lives. And when you change somebody's life with your music, that's even more special. The album is a lot about love and respect and memory and that must have really got you inside when you're making that music and how beautiful because a lot of people don't know how to to explain express love you and I know that we express our love with words and with music and it's it sounds like you really expressed everything that you wanted you've been holding back for quite a few years it sounds like am I right I did I even took a break from masters at work I said Kenny I really need to record this album if if I mean, you know, if you follow any of our music, you know that we haven't put out music together for one year almost. Maybe one or two little projects we did here and there, but um, we're focusing on our MAW Electronic album in the next month and setting it up for Miami. You know, we're going we're gonna to play it like some work in progress, but, you know, he understood I needed to make this record, and it took about uh, six months to make that record. Well, you're Mr. Classic, you're, you know, I Can't Get No Sleep, uh, you got uh, River Ocean, I mean, you got one hit after another. How is it feel to be having all these classics? I mean, you're very successful. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's deep because, you know, we travel around the world and I've been traveling for like 14 years now. But I can't get no sleep. <laughs> yeah, I can't get no sleep. <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, it's really a beautiful thing to see people uh, singing your song, putting their arms up in the air, feeling your music, and closing their eyes and crying. I mean, you know, it's deep. And, you know, we, we worked really hard and, and tried to make a lot of good music and a lot of good records, good tracks, good songs, you know, a little bit of everything. And, uh, you know, the payback to me is, is, is seeing that. And I've seen it anywhere from Greece to Japan to, to Israel to everywhere, you know, back here, you know what I mean? And um, even Africa. I remember the first time I saw you, I was in New York at Studio 54. And remember Fabian? Fabian. Fabian DJ Fabian. Well, 
favorite of a, of a colleague of mine, and we went to Studio 54, all of us, and I like never went to a club here, you know, and I saw you, I was standing there, and I see you have three turntables, you got a reel-to-reel, -reel, and you're looking for a record, and you had Puerto Ricans everywhere. I mean, you were just amazing back then. I mean, those were like the Studio 54 Palladium days. Tell me how, I mean, how was that back then? I mean, it's amazing. I, I mean, to me, I see I see my career as an evolution, you know what I mean? It started with, I've, I mean, I was I always played all kinds of music. At that time, I was playing hip-hop, reggae, house, freestyle, you know, Latin hip-hop, whatever you may want to call it. And, um... You know, it, it was it was a whole different time, and I loved it. You know, to me, I was like growing up, and I was just so excited. I had a lot of energy. I mean, you're talking about I was playing to 16 and up. You know what I mean? I was about 24 at that time. Me and David Orth were talking about uh, about dance music and how the hip hop and everything like that. And do you feel the dance community is not as strong? As it was, as like the hip hop scene, they're very strong together. They stick together, even though they have their issues. Dance music seems to have some problems, but we still are able to, to hang out. But yet, if we go see Paul Van Dyke or Tiesto, and we see you, it's just packed. And you bring the electronic music back, house music. I consider it electronic music because it's all electronica. It's, it's the same vibe. It's dance music. I mean, how do you feel about all that? Well, I think, you know, the problem with, with our music, our business, our end of the business and our music is that they, they don't stick together as much. Not they, everybody doesn't stick together as much. I think, why shouldn't I be making a record with Sasha or, Ron, or Ronnie Size and see what comes out of it? You understand what I mean? That And then, you know, his crowd will hear my stuff, my crowd will hear his stuff, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. And that's how we start, you know, we, we need to do more things, more things and uh, bringing... A lot of at least a lot of the people that are leading in a lot of different areas of music together and, and make music and you know there's also a lot of other things that that need help as well but that's more the record side uh, the record business you know the, the label business and stuff. what is your favorite instrument that you still have that it's old and dirty but you still use it old and dirty oh my roads I have roads and on the roads, I wrote a lot of songs, like, you know, because I wrote a little bit, too. I played keyboards. I mean, but I got spoiled with musicians and these incredible players that I don't want to let them go. You know what I mean? I don't want to go back to the keyboard. And Kenny's always like, Louie, let's do it like before. Because, you know, our first four or five years when we were doing all those dubs, I was playing keyboards. And he was doing the beats. So Kenny's like, Louie, you need to play again. I said, yo, I need to practice. I need to go back to the teacher and, you know. Get some new chords, cause I wrote I wrote in two keys so many songs of, of our records, but I know those two keys. You know what I mean? It's like it's just like the Beatles. Have you ever seen the music to the Beatles? It's very bas basic. F A C. Okay, F A C. Yesterday's an F. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, but you know, I, I I encourage that too for a lot of young people out there that it's important to uh, uh, know your roots and learn your instrument. You know what I mean? You take a class, you go to school. I mean, you know. You gotta learn it, learn learn what it's really about. Because, I mean, you know, I had classical lessons when I was really young, and then I didn't do any keyboards for a, or piano or anything for a long, for maybe about 10 years, no, 15 years. You know, then I went back to it and I said, damn, you know, all those those 15 years that went by, I could have been learning it. You know what I mean? And I regret that. But, and I would I would have been in a different place musically. But um, it's never too late. You know what I mean? I look forward to that next album. I mean, I'm, I can't wait to hear this album. <laughs> this is coming out March 9th. You know, we'll be all we'll be in Miami out there celebrating it. And um, then I'm going to do a remix album of this. Actually, I've already prepared it. Where I got all my friends together to do a remix each. Joe Clozel, Kenny Dope, Isole. Um, oh, man, there's so many. DJ Gregory. You know, Spinner. I got all the guys together. They all did remixes. And I produced three new songs. One from Blaze, one from Anani, and one from Raul. And that's going to come in the summertime. And in the new year, 2005, is when we're going to put the Masters at Work, uh, the More Electronic, which is the next Masters at Work album. If you were a comic book character, who would you be? A comic book character. Spider-Man. Why Spider-Man? Or oh, Superman. Which one's stronger? <laughs> there you have it, little Louis Vega here.
here in Los Angeles at Marcus Wyatt's birthday party. You want to say happy birthday to him? Yes, happy birthday to my man Marcus. I love what he's doing out here. He's been doing it for years, and I'm really proud of him because I've seen him way back from the beginning, back in his brass days, you know, to where he is now. And I'm happy. His CDs, everything he's doing, you know, his night deep, more power to it. I'm here always. That's my residency in L.A., and I love L.A. There you have it, Little Louis Vega, Los Angeles. Thank you. You're watching No Cover.